Bristow by Frank Dickens with Michael Williams as Bristow Rodney Bewes as Jones Dora Bryan as Mrs Purdy Owen Brenman as Hewitt and featuring Leslie Phillips as Mr Perkins The Good the bad and the temporary. As a child, I did not mix with other children. Not for me, the hustle and bustle of the school playground with its attendant noise and clamour. For me, an unnaturally quiet and reserved boy, pallid of face and noted for my sad but luminous eyes, my pleasure at that time was reading Zane Grey novels, for Zane Grey wrote westerns. As I grew older, my pleasure in the written word was replaced by an obsession with the movies, and in particular those with western themes. Cowboy films were the order of the day, where the main ingredients common to every movie of the genre was the arrival of the stranger in the shanty town and the inevitable showdown. I was reminded of this one day last week, seated at my desk in the buying department of the Chester Perry organisation, when Mr Perkins of Personnel entered the room. Oh, good morning, Mr Rester. Uh, good morning, Mr Perkins. I, I'm sorry, Mr Fudge is not in. Uh, good, because it's you I've really come to see. <laughs> Surely you flatter me. Oh, not really. I have a request to ask. Fire away, Mr. Perkins. Fire away. Noblesse oblige, etc., etc. Uh, Mr. Fudge has asked me to arrange with Tilly's temps for a girl to help out for a fortnight. Uh, I did not hear the end of whatever it was he said after this. That feeling of weariness came over me. The feeling that all ageing gunfighters with a reputation experience when they are informed a young stranger has come to town to try his luck, and I sank back in my chair. One day I knew there would come along a temp. I returned to normality to hear him still speaking. You have acquired a reputation, undeserved, I'm sure, but a reputation, nevertheless, of being less than kind to girls sent from Tilly's temps, that you are less than civil, or downright rude, in fact. Mm. Tyrannical is a word that is mentioned frequently in the letters of protest that start to arrive as soon as the girls report back. And uh, let, No, no, let, let me finish. The girls sent here, fresh-faced and full of joys, return as battle-scarred war veterans in order that we continue to do further business with Tillies and there are rumours that our relationship with their company is iffy. I wonder whether you could, um, you know what I mean, mm. take it easy, treat them like human beings, especially this one. I think those remarks should best be directed at Mr. Fudge. Come off it. You, you and I know the girls never see Mr. Fudge. It's you that causes all the trouble. You're the one that makes them cry. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to do with Mr. Fudge. Just take it easy. That's all I'm asking. Milk of human kindness stuff. Hmm? <laughs> you know what I mean. Oh, morning, Bristow. Morning, Mr. Perkins. Oh, no. It's not temping time come round again. Don't say that. Uh, good morning, Mr. Jones. I'm afraid it is. Nothing to do with me. Accounts have requested I get in touch with Tilly's temp. Another crazy mixed up temp. Why? 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 Wake up. Calm why? yourself, Jones. Keep your feelings under control. This one may be different. She won't be different, and you know it. Temps are all the same. They tear your heart out of your body and they wring it and twist it until they've squeezed every drop of emotion out and nothing remains but a dried-up husk that was once a man. I, I say steady on, old man. Oh, God. Is he always me. like this? Mm. Temps are trouble. Trouble, treacherous, forever teasing, tantalising. This is nothing. 
You should see him while we're waiting for the tea trolley. He starts getting I, heavy. Look, I, 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 I've got to go. I, I, I've lots to do. Why? I, I'll return the Why? Now, what we need, Bristow, is a plan where we don't have to speak to her. And what we need, Jones, is to leave the word we out of things. I'm not getting involved with any of your schemes. Is that clear? Morning, Mr Bristow. Morning, Mr Jones. Lovely day. Is it? Is it a lovely day? Or is it the dawning of a new age of deception and deceit? Oh. Of heartbreak, of jealousy. Oh, don't tell me we're getting another. Oh, why? <laughs> How did why you know? Did have to have yeah, I remember the way he behaved honestly. last time. Now look, Mr. Oh, just a second. I'm on the phone. Is that Joe's joke, Emporium? Yeah. Yep. I'd like to order an electric handshake, a whoopee cushion, a clockwork mouse. A dangly, spi- a dangly spider, half a dozen exploding firecrackers. Oh, yes, they are sending another attempt today. Thank you. Jones, I think you and I should have a serious talk. Uh, j- just a minute, Bristow. <clears throat> just a minute. I'm on the phone, on the phone. Uh, hello? Uh, say it with flowers. I- I'd like to order a bunch of roses. Yes? Yes, it's Mr. Jones of Chester Ferries. <laughs> yes, they're sending another one today. Chocolates. Mm. Why not? Why does Mr. Yes. Jones, knowing you will have his certainly. heart broken again, uh, persist yes, in welcoming yes, the new yes, tent with yes, flowers yes, and chocolates? Tempts are his weakness. As a child, he was starved of affection, and the first human being that ever showed him kindness was a temp he met on a caravan site whilst on holiday at Stony Beach on Sea while he was in his teens. Yeah, well, I like temps. I like them because they're here today and gone tomorrow. There is no commitment. They come into your life, and before you know it, they're off again. There's none of this serious stuff. Uh, uh, you keep it that way, my boy, and you'll never find yourself in trouble. Never mix business and pleasure. Otherwise, you'll end up like Jones. Mm. Here he comes now to ask Bristow. about his appearance. <coughs> yeah, yeah. Bristow, is, is the shirt clean? I mean, really clean. It was clean when I put it on this morning, but, you know, with all this pollution... It's clean, Jones, it's clean. And my tie? It's it's OK. The double winds are not as slightly old-fashioned, but... I mean the colour. Does it go? Does it... Go? What do you think, Hewitt? Mm. I'd like it to look sporty. Mm. You know what I mean? Uh, well, a tie with breakfast all down the front can never look sporty. I didn't have any breakfast this morning. Coffee and marmalade. Yesterday morning! I should have had it clean! Uh. I knew I should have had it clean! Uh. What am I going to do? I haven't sake! Sit down! I'm too nervous to sit down! Do you think we should tidy this place up a bit? I mean, look at, look at the window! Uh, no, I, I can't oh, take any more of this. Oh, have you seen it? Uh, and that's the phone gun as well. I can't stay there. Oh, Anyone wants me, I'm in that diving pool. All right. Oh, look, I'm glad. I'm glad he's gone. Yeah. It'll give me a chance to explain a little idea I've just had. Yeah. When the new temp arrives, we'll start talking about the uh, national economy, yeah. how it has killed any enthusiasm you had for working hard. Yeah. And you go on and on about it, yeah. how there's no future, and, and you wish to end it all, and you suddenly run across the window as if you're going to throw yourself out. But just before you get there, I bring you crashing to the floor! Ah! In a flying rugby tackle. What are you talking Isn't about? Isn't it obvious? I pretend to save your life. She'll like that. Girls go for that sort of thing. I've often found with temps they go for the dramatic. I think you're off your rocker. Does that mean you won't help? Yeah, that is exactly what it means. Flying rugby tackles indeed. I want no part of it. Suit yourself. I'll get the post boy. It'll be even more impressive if there's a child involved. Postroom, here I come. Mr. Bristow, I just saw Mr. Perkins leaving your office. That means you're getting a temp, doesn't it? Occupational hazard, Miss Hubman. Oh, does Mr. Jones know? <sighs> I'm afraid so. How is he taking it? Um, hopping up and down the whole gamut of human emotions, like a tightrope walker with a pebble in his shoe. Oh, 
I'm surprised Tilly's temps keep supplying us with girls after the way he treated the last one. <laughs> the clockwork mouse, the dangly spider and the firecrackers, never mind the electric handshake, are the signs of a warped mind. <clears throat> he should be locked up. Uh, yeah. I wish... And this is none of my business. Mm. But I wish you'd have a word with him, mm. man to man, about the way he treats the temps. Have a word with him? Yes. You're a man and... He respects you. Did he say that? No. No, he didn't say it, but I should imagine he does. Oh, yes. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Come in. I said, come in. Excuse me, is this the buying department? Gosh. <laughs> Don't tell me I've died and gone to heaven and you are an angel at the pearly gates. Mm. What's your name? Uh, Silvana. Uh, Tilly's temp sent me. Uh, did you say uh, this was the buying department? Yes. Mr Perkins said second floor, but not exactly where on the second floor. No, no this is it. Uh, sit down, sit down. Thank uh, you. D did you say Silvana? Yes. Oh, I, I like Silvana. <laughs> Silvana. <laughs> Say it loud and there's music playing. <laughs> Say it soft and it's almost like praying. Whoa! The devil is going on out here. Did I hear singing? Uh, this young lady is from Tilly's Temps. Uh, good morning, Miss... Uh... Hunter. Silvana Hunter. Is there anywhere I can freshen up? Down the corridor, second door on the left. Oh, thank you, sir. Ooh, allow me. Oh. <laughs> Second though. Thank you, sir. Get on with your work, you uh, I'm afraid Mr. Bristow's not here at the moment. Yes, tell him there's a package on reception waiting to be picked up. Certainly. Uh, oh, good morning. Young man, what's your name? Hewitt. Mr. Hewitt, I'm um, Perkins of personnel. I sent a young lady ah. up here a few minutes ago. Silvana. Silvana Hunter. Yes, she's here. She's gone to freshen up. Oh, and Mr. Brister? He'll be back in a minute. Uh, could you remind him not to forget our conversation earlier, as a favour to me? I'll mm. tell him, sir. And thank you kindly, Mr. Hewitt. Sam Perkins never forgets a kindness. <laughs> Hello? What was that? A wake-up call for Mr Bristow? He has one every morning at 10.15? Um, thank you. Ah, uh, Mr Bristow, uh, you've just missed Mr Perkins. He said not to forget what he told you this morning. Thank you. And also there's a package for you down in reception. Splendid, splendid. Let battle commence. <sighs> Hello? A wake-up call for Mr. Br... You rang a few minutes ago. Oh, I see, you're the backup call. Every morning at 10.20. Yep, thank you. Come in. Ah, good morning again, Silvana. Good morning. Um, there's no need to knock on the door every time you come in. I mean, you're one of us now. Thank you. Do it. I think we'll give Miss Hunter a desk by the window. Uh, we don't have a desk, Mr. Fudge. I've made arrangements for one to be sent up. Thank you, sir. Let me know when it arrives, Hewitt. Fudge? Uh, good morning, Mr. Perkins. Yes, Miss Hunter is here. You'd like to see her? Uh, certainly, I'll send her along. Uh, Miss Hunter, you heard that. Uh, Mr. Perkins would like to see you in personnel. You know where it is? Yes. Oh, allow me. Thank you, we'll sir. have your desk in place by the time you are back. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Get on with your work, Hewitt! Oh, it's not another wake-up call, is it? Sorry? Some flowers in reception for Mr Jersey. I'll tell him. The prodigal son checks it. Mr Bristow, she is here. She is beautiful. She is the most ravishing creature you have ever seen. Rawr. Fantastic. Sylvana. <laughs> I once met a girl named Sylvana. Stop once, Hewitt. <sighs> Waxing lyrical on Chester Perry premises is not allowed during working hours. <laughs> You've 
seen her? Yep, I've seen her. And Mr Fudge has seen her. And even he flipped. He held the door open for her twice. How can these things be? I was only out of the room for five minutes. Held the door open. Yes. Did he open it wide? Yep. Twice? Twice. Wide. Both times. <laughs> Holy mackerel! And he's having a desk sent up. She's to sit next to the window. She'll be next to me. <laughs> I'll be back in a minute. I needed time to think. Things were progressing a little too fast for comfort. And as Zane Grey would have put it, the local citizens were all lining up with a stranger in town. It seemed to me I would have to take the initiative. Having failed to catch sight of her so far, but knowing she was to be given a desk by the window, I was wondering how best to bring in the clockwork mouse when I felt a tugging at my sleeve. Mr. Bristol, uh, uh, wake up! Uh, uh, what? Uh, uh, wake uh, up! Oh, uh, uh, boy. <laughs> Good morning. Never seen you actually asleep on your feet before. Uh, what on earth is the matter with Mr. Jones? Mm. He just asked me to stand on the window ledge and threaten to commit suicide and let him talk me down. Yes, I take no notice. It's just his way of trying to impress the new temps when they arrive. Mm. Yeah, and talking of temps, I need your help. Mm -hmm. I wasn't dreaming just now. I was wondering how I can get rid of one who started in the buying department this morning. Mm -hmm. She's supposed to be pretty. Mm -hmm. And we don't want pretty girls here. They interfere with the workflow. Oh, uh, pretty girls are a distraction. Mm. The last thing you need in a firm this size is distraction. Mm. Men not pulling their weight. Mm. In a firm as big as your ankles, <laughs> you want everyone to work as a team. Yeah, yeah. A trim ankle and a well-turned calf sends output figures spiralling down. Mm. A come-hither glance can wreak havoc with sales figures at home and abroad. Mm. Even a child as young as yourself, but, they are no disrespect men, can't fail to notice the heads turn when a girl like her walks down the corridor. Mm. Heads that are better bent over a ledger or an imminent yeah. deadline. Yeah. She is costing the firm thousands every minute she's on the premises. You're right. Right, Mr. Bristow. She'll have to go. Mm. I'm with you. How do you suggest we go about it? We frighten her away. How? With the contents of this package. Oh, what's in there? Whoopee cushion, electric handshake, dangling spider, a few firecrackers. That should do it. Yeah. Now, let me have the whoopee cushion. No, 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 no. The electric handshake. <laughs> It's the buying department. That's right. We thought you was on the third floor. No, we've been on the second ever since I've been here. Nobody thought to tell me. We're always the last to know. Got a desk here. Oh. Here it is. The goods lift's out of order. We've had to lug it all the way up from the basement to the third. And now back down here. Uh, it goes over by the window. Uh, over by the window, lads. Oh, we'll be close. finished with it eventually when oh. people have made up their minds. Mm. How's that? Well, it looks fine. Oh, and uh, here comes the young lady who'll be using it. Um, Savannah, what, what do you think? Thank you very much, sir. No problem, miss. We can... Push it around if you like, yeah. if you okay. prefer. Yes. Give you a yes. better view. Thank you. Th that's lovely. Pleasure, miss. Come on, lad. Uh, Everyone here is so kind. Oh. Well, whose desk is this? Uh, oh, that's mine. Um, oh. You don't mind sitting next to me? Well, of course not. <laughs> uh, Miss Hunter, I have a couple of letters before lunch. Uh, yes, sir. Duty calls. Bye. Ciao. <laughs> Buying department. Alarm call for Mr. Bist. He has one before lunch every day. Yes, thank you. <laughs> A new desk, eh? Yes. She certainly believes in getting her own way. This uh, <laughs> what's her name? Silvana Hunter. Here you go. <laughs> Hunter, and I'm the hunted. <laughs> Oh. Buying department, you are speaking. I want it in the post room. Yeah, all right, I'll come down straight away. I want it in the post room. Great. As Zane Grey would put it, he opened a drawer in the desk and took from it his well worn gun belt. <laughs>
I took lunch on a bench in the park, secure in the knowledge that having planted the items from Joe's joke emporium in and around her desk before she returned from Fudge's office, it was all over by the shouting. There is no way a temp can live in the same room as a dangling spider or a clockwork mouse, and with the postboy as an accomplice, it was simply a question of time. I was in great shape then when I re-entered the office to find a disconsolate Hewitt slumped over his desk. Afternoon, Hewitt. Afternoon. Uh, cheer up, Lev. Hello. Where's the temp? How should I know? He was having lunch in the canteen with Perkins of Personnel and that Yobbo Elvis of Production Control when I went in. Oh, she's only been here a couple of hours and she's dining with the gentry. Uh, calm yourself. You're beginning to smoulder like Jones while he's waiting for the tea trolley. I'm not speaking. Knowing of the emotional torment he was undergoing at the hands of the green-eyed monster, I had suffered myself as a child when, having a crush on Sheila Micklethwaite at St Mary's Mixed Infants, I found another boy carrying her toys to school. I murmured some soothing words and moved to the window. To my annoyance, when checking on the booby traps I had set for the temp, I discovered that they had been removed before she could stumble across them. An inkling as to who had done this came when Miss Sunman brought some work in. I'm disappointed in you, Mr Bristow. Oh, why is that, Miss Sunman? When I asked you to have a word with Mr Jones about the new temp, I realised it was none of my business to ask you to intercede on her behalf. I know how busy you are to bother with such things, but in my heart of hearts, I hoped you might find the time because she is such a pretty girl and so helpless. And I wouldn't know. I've never seen her. She's never at her desk. I'm not surprised. The thing's going on all around her. Even Mr Fudge left some flowers for her. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. I'm not being ridiculous. Mr Fudge went over there while Silvana was out of the room and left some flowers on her desk. Uh, you've got it all wrong. The flowers came from Jones. He always buys flowers for the new temps. Uh, Mr Jones left a whoopee cushion on her seat, a firecracker under her chair, and I found a dangling spider hanging from the window and a mouse thing under the cabinet. Ah, that wasn't Jones. That was uh, someone else. Someone else? Uh, Hewitt. <gasps> he always does those kind of things. That's the child in him. He's like a cat that kills a mouse and leaves it on the doorstep as a present for its owner. Could you have a word with him as well, Mr Bristow? I'll see what I can do. Thank you, Mr Bristow. And also one with that nasty postboy. Mm. He had one of those awful buzzing handshakes. Oh. The arrival of the tea trolley and Mrs Purdy was, I suppose, like the arrival of the stagecoach in town and signalled the dramatic events that were to follow. Hello. Uh, tea up. Come and get it. A cup of your finest, Mrs Purdy. Stand clear. Come, come. Holy mackerel. When I get tea, everyone in the room gets tea. Not today, though. You're all on your lonesome. Where is everyone? The voice is seven the voice first. Hello, Mr Jones. Smelt the teapot, did you? Oh, where is this temp that everyone is talking about? He means Silvana. Here you are, Mr oh, Jones. Lovely. Thank you. Isn't she a lovely girl, Mr Bristol? Oh, I don't know. I haven't seen her either. Oh, Mrs Purdy, I don't know whether I'm extra thirsty with all my running about, but this tea is delicious. It has a delightful old-fashioned taste to it. The taste of my mother's tea. Do you know what that is, Mr ah. Jones? It has an ingredient I had forgotten to include over the past few years. No. And your modern society... With its tea bags and vending machines, has also forgotten. Ah. It was not until my Sylvana mentioned I... it that the memories came flooding back. Yes. For the ingredient to which you refer is heart. Ah. Tea with heart. There's nothing to beat it, Mr. Jones. Good old heart. You said oh. your Sylvana. Are you referring to our temp? That's her. Your Sylvana? She's not a relative, surely. As good as. I've known her parents, the Hunter family, for years. Mr Purdy and myself met them on the caravan site at Stony Beach on Sea when Sylvana was a baby. Uh, she grew up with my boys, Red and Elvis. So that's how she knows Elvis, the assistant head of production control with whom she was lunching in the canteen today. It all comes together. Did you say Stony Beach on Sea? Wonderful place. The site goes right down to the water's edge when the tide's in. I know it very well, Mrs Purdy. It was at Stony Beach on Sea, and this girl, 
Tondalea, I called her. <sighs> the first girl that ever befriended me had a caravan. <laughs> On our first date, we went to a cinema in town. <laughs> it was an Italian film called Death in Venice and starred a beautiful actress called Silvana Magnano. <laughs> and afterwards, we lay in each other's arms with the waves crashing against the side of the caravan. Stony Beach on Sea, oh. a caravan, a film star called Silvana. What are you saying, Jones? Holy mackerel. You don't think it's not possible? Jones, don't say it. I hear footsteps coming down the corridor. Silvana is returning from lunch. I, I can't face her. Stand back, everyone. Leave this to me. Hewitt. Hewitt. She married Perkins of Personnel this afternoon in the registry office in town. Elvis of Production Control was best man. <sighs> oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Silvana never returned, but rode off into the sunset as a married woman. There was no showdown, therefore no final reel. I therefore claim the victory. Another notch. I am still undefeated. Still the greatest. Bristow was written by Frank Dickens and featured Michael Williams as Bristow, Rodney Bewes as Jones, Dora Bryan as Mrs Purdy, Owen Brenman as Hewitt, John Glover as Fudge, Katie Odie as Miss Sunman, Simon Schatzberger as The Postboy, David Batley as Stokes, and Jackie Neglia as Silvana, with Leslie Phillips as Mr Perkins. The music was composed and performed by John Whitehall. The sound recording was by Graham Harper, the director, Neil Cargill.